Welcome back. This is episode three of Banking APIs, and we'll be looking at API management. What we're going to look at now is API management. And we're going to use Azure's API management. So if we go to azure.com and log in, we'll see that Azure includes a number of different types of platforms and services that we can use. If we scroll down to API management, here, we'll see that we can go into an API, create an API in the service, and from the management console, we can do a number of uh, things very quickly. So we can import our API, and we can generate a developer portal, and we can see some statistics about our API. So if we go to import an API, Azure wants to act as a proxy in front of our API, and it gives us these options to import either a Waddle or a Swagger document. Now, Swagger is a quite a good standard in describing the API and becoming quite popular. And it just describes the operations that you can use, the media types that are supported, and it's a very good way of describing what your API does. So all we need is a public-facing address here and import our, our, our API, and we'll be able to use the Azure API management. So if we switch back to Design Studio, I'll show you a couple of things that come along with the Terminos Interaction Framework. So the first thing that we've added here to our, our default project, our sample project, is this um, RIM plugin, which generates various things from those RIM files that we looked at earlier here in, in the models. And one of the options is to generate a Swagger document. So we can take the RIMs in as source and decide where to generate the Swagger document to. So the, the build output directory here. So I've enabled this in my uh, project and I now have a file produced when I do the build here, this um, API docs.json, which is the Swagger document. And the Swagger document wants a base path, wants a, a full path to somewhere um, publicly available where the API is hosted. So what we do is we add that at runtime, uh, we're using this Swagger servlet. So we add this Swagger servlet to the web XML, which then reads in that API docs JSON and adds whatever um, power path we've been bound to at deployment time. So using this technique, we get a full Swagger support wherever the API is deployed. And we include one other thing. If we look for user agent again, we have this web fragment here, just like the other web fragments for these user agents, that includes the Swagger um, browser, the Swagger UI. So I'll just show you now what that first part looks like. So we once again go to our Postman REST client, and you can see here I've already made a request to API docs, and this is the local uh, Swagger server that we were looking at earlier on my machine. But what I want to do is go to the one that I've deployed in the cloud. So this one's a public facing version of that same project. And you see again, it's returning the Swagger document here. Okay, so we're doubly sure. Let's make a request to the ANQ customer infos. Hit send. And it's gone off and fetched a list of customers, but from the live server this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is import that this um, API into the Azure API Management Console. So I'll first grab the um, API docs URL here, and I'll put it into Azure and import the Swagger document. I can decide what I want the uh, API to look like. So if I call it Prospect Iris, I'll be fine. Hit save. Okay, so it returns an error. And the reason it's returning an error is I have to log in to this, this API. So it's actually secured, even the API docs, which is, which is not ideal for a demo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in from the clipboard. So I'm going to take that, um, I've downloaded that already, put it into a document here, and I'll just paste it directly in there. Keep the same uh, prefix. And I can see there's a save button down there. Hit save. And that's now imported into the 
uh, management console and I can see um, a few things already without any extra effort at all. So the first thing I can do is I can go to the developer portal here. You can't quite see it. If I go to the developer portal. This is a, a generated um, website when I signed up for the Azure API management. And if I click on APIs, you can see there's a test API and there's this echo API, and this is the one I just imported now. What I can do is I can give that a nice name. So if I go back. Let's go to settings, and let's just call it uh, the prospects. That'll be the API name. Hit save. We'll open that in a new tab this time. Get back to APIs. Right, so there's prospects. So someone would be, one of your um, target um, audience, whether it's internal or external, would be looking through these APIs and looking for something they can actually call. Now if you go to that ENQ customers one, you even get Java, an example Java if that's what they want to try and call it, or any other language that they, they would like to try and exercise the API. And that's a really quick start for someone trying to get used to using the service. And to actually call this API, the person trying to use the service would have to sign up in some way. So normally there'd be a sign up option here if I weren't logged in as the administrator and they would get a, an email and get a, a sub subscribe screen and then they'd be a, given access to the API through the, the management portal here. So you can see there are two different types of products, a starter and an unlimited and the starter one will be rate limited so we don't want someone uh, overwhelming the service or using it too much and the um, user is associated or given permissions to uh, different subscription schemes. You can see here my user is already subscribed to this, this starter service. So I've got access here. I can use a subscription key on that prospect iris service. That's the subscription key I've been given. And I can hit send and make a request. So one of the things that's coming back here is it's saying uh, 401 unauthorized. So it's hit this Azure API, it's then tried to proxy it onto our service and it's come back with this unauthorized. So again, part of the uh, management portal, we can go into the APIs, have a look at the prospects API, we can go to security, and we can actually proxy the security. So you might have a service that you want to be um, you know, open to the outside world and you enter your password here for the back end part now I can make that same request uh, to the um, proxy management portal and it will authenticate with the back end and return the results and there you are, the results have come back if we go to the management portal again we have a look at the dashboard you might have noticed along the way that there's these um, charts and graphs showing up. So you can see that there's been some um, requests here already. We could do a few more requests and then this chart would be tracking the activity on the prospects API and giving you the chance to limit it and understand how much it's been used and then hook it into billing and, and this, that's the, the benefit of using the API management portal. So thanks for watching. That's been API management with the Temnos Interaction Framework and hooking it up to Azure API management. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode.